Hi. Right, let's talk about the future of the novel. You know about novels, right? Those linear, long-form, finite, textual, fictional stories. Yeah, I, I would hope that you would know what they are. But now, who of you still reads novels? Please, please raise your hands. I, I do, I read novels. Okay, that's okay. Uh, but now, how many of you read as many novels as you'd like to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. Uh, you, don't, you don't have the time, you have other priorities, uh, other media like uh, TV shows, movies, video games seem easier to get into. Um, and yeah, I ask because I brought this, this pirate chest uh, full of novels that I don't have time to read. ARM actually stands for Abandoned Reading Material. Um, <laughs> and I was hoping that you'd be able to take them on, but I guess not. And that's, that's such a sad thing. Because novels can be so great, they can give you such wonderful experiences. Uh, you know, they can tra transport you into a character's head. They can bring you to a place where you've never been. They can be complex, they can be nuanced. They can be totally weird, super funny. They can really take the time to make, to make their point, you know, to make you feel their point. And, and in fact, early on, I decided that these kinds of experiences were so great that I wanted to try to give these experiences to other people, that I would become a writer. And, and I succeeded, I, I did this. Um, this is half a kilo of literature. This is what I worked on for years. And of course the thing is, if I don't read other people's books, who's going to read mine? So in recent years, I started thinking about this problem a lot. And I concluded that more than time constraints, more than other media forms, this device is the problem. If it weren't for the distractions that we get on these, we could read a, a productive author's entire works in a day, right? But we don't. And then I thought, what if this device could not just be the problem, but the solution as well? I mean, there are lots of starting points. Uh, just think about the fact that you carry it around all day that it does these amazing things. It, it could, for one, store thousands of books. And in fact, we do read a lot on it already. It's, it may be just WhatsApp messages, and Facebook posts, but we do read. And actually, reading is quite good on it. And of course, that's a, that's a different thing from reading novels. Novels require focus, and they require uh, an extended period of time uh, to, to do what, what academics call deep reading. And you could say that this device is just not suited to that, that its nature is hyper-connected, multitasked, and that it just won't work. But then again, it is just a piece of glass with software behind it. And we can make the software do anything that we want it to. Now, this is what, why I decided that I wouldn't just be a writer, that I would be, uh, would be what I call a hybrid writer. Uh, by which I mean that I still write novels, in fact, I'm working on one right now, but I, that I also do research into this field of digital possibilities uh, and try to come up with my own inventions in this space. And today, I would like to share with you three examples of the kind of thing that I've been thinking about and working on. Now, the first example is all about the dynamic screen on these devices. Uh, just think about a static paper page for a minute. The words are on there when you print them, and you can't do anything about it. They're stuck. But on the screen, we can make the words go anywhere we want to, do anything we want to, and, and that opens up some possibilities. So, of course, this is a way that we often do it. We basically emulate, emulate the paper book, and you slide between the pages. And this is pretty, pretty okay. It's a little bit slow. You can't skip through the book like you can with paper, but it works. Luckily, someone invented scrolling, and scrolling is such a great invention. It feels so nice on the touchscreen to use your finger to move through content. But then again, it's really more suited to you know, scanning content, to looking something up, and not that suited for this, this deep focus that you want when you read a novel. So what I've been working on is an alternative interface, which shows just one piece of text at a time, beautifully typeset, 
And when you press the button, you move to the next block. There's a, button, a, a, a piece of text on screen. You read it, you press the button, and you move to the next one. And the thing is, if you want to scroll, you still can, and the surrounding text will appear. So it's like a, a hybrid between the dynamism of scrolling and the staticism of the static page on paper. Uh, and in this early prototype phase, it already works quite well. Now, uh, for the second example, I want to talk about the color screen and stereo sound capabilities of the phones and tablets that we use. Um, and for this, I have to tell you a little bit about the content of my next novel. Uh, it's about a game developer. His name is Luc Nijman. And he travels to Los Angeles to show his new game at a trade show. And it's not going that well. In fact, it's qu going quite bad. And as we enter the novel, he's very depressed. And he goes to his hotel room. And he goes to his bathroom. He turns on the tap. And the bath starts filling itself with hot water. And when the water is high enough, he submerges himself under the water. And the screen slowly turns blue. And you hear uh, the underwater sounds that you hear when you submerge yourself underwater. And uh, we, together with the character, enter the world of his thoughts. And that goes a little bit uh, like this. When we were working on this, we noticed that not only does it help you immerse even deeper into the story, it also helps, because you're reading with your earphones on, to cut off distractions from around you. So it does help in, in multiple ways to focus on the story. And there's another benefit, because as soon as the screen turns blue again in the novel later on, and as soon as you hear the, these underwater sounds, you instantly know, I'm in the bathtub, I'm in the hotel room. So it helps you give pointers to the readers. Now, for the third and final example, I want to talk about the connected nature of these devices. And, and just to show how, how big a, a revolution this is, uh, I think in my life, in, in my paper book era, I got two fan letters. I got a lot more reviews, but those were a little bit less favorable than the fan letters. And, and the point is, that was it in f as far as getting feedback from the outside world went. I just didn't know how people, real people, real readers, were experiencing my work. And now, of course, if they are all reading on this device, uh, in my app, I can, if they want to, if they agree to it, track how they are reading, how fast they are reading, what parts excite them, where they start reading faster, where they quit. I'd like to know when they quit. And uh, that's not all. I can ask them to fill in little questionnaires after each chapter. Uh, and I could ask them to give likes to piece of, pieces of text that might look a little like these new uh, Facebook reactions. You know, people could say, this part made me laugh out loud, this part made me really sad. And of course, it would be interesting if a part that I intended to be funny is actually uh, sad to them. And I can use information like that to rewrite my text and push it out to my readers. So in that sense, it creates a two-way communication between us. Now, a lot of critics say that or think that I might use this kind, of, uh, this kind of process to try and create the perfect middle-of-the-road novel that everybody will love. Well, of course, I'd like to do that, but I don't think it's possible. I don't think such a novel exists. And it's not my intention. My intention is to see whether what I set out to do with the novel, and this does really force me to think about what I want to express, to, to see whether that actually comes across and to steer it away, or maybe if someone notices something very interesting that I hadn't seen, that I can adapt it to that. And I really think that this kind of process can lead to a text that is at the same time more pure and focused on what I want to say, and if other authors use this, what they want to say, and something that is more clear and focused for the readers. So everybody benefits. So yeah, uh, literature is wonderful. We just don't read enough. Just saw that. And I hope that with these kinds of inventions, I can 
at least help to make, make literature more relevant again in this digital age. Uh, and these are just three examples. There's lots more where it came from. It feels like a hugely fertile ground that many more ideas will, will, will arise from. Um, but there's something else that I want to emphasize. And for that, I have to get on top of my soapbox because actually, uh, ARM stands for Advanced Rhetoric Magnifier. <laughs> so let me do just that. And what I want to emphasize is the way in which I'm doing this. You know, working with experts in various fields, I have a great team, uh, writing, but also researching and inventing, and certainly not stopping at the status quo of what's heard of in my field. And, and that gives me a, a powerful sensation uh, that, that I am in control, that instead of waiting for the future to happen, I'm helping create it. And, you know, by, by controlling the reader experience, I'm really controlling my own destiny. And this is a kind of way of working that, that assures that, that even in, uh, dec in the decades to come, there will always be ways for me, or, or new art forms perhaps, to express myself, which is what it's about, I think, to create experiences for other people in a way that's uniquely mine. And, and you know, I, I can't recommend this way of working more highly to everybody working in the arts or considering to. Now, if that's a little bit of a grand goal, uh, there is a way to start smaller. There is something that all of you can do tonight or maybe tomorrow, this weekend. You can find a quiet place, you can shut down those internet connections, and you can pick up a novel. Or as the pirate chest would say, Arr, read, matey! <laughs> Thank you.